Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Jane uh, Irrigation Series. I'm Richard Rastusha, Vice President of Water Management Solutions for Jane Irrigation. And today I'm really excited because we're gonna be talking about the 2020 Almond Conference. And uh, so I know some people have said, well, why are you talking about the Almond Conference? And uh, one of the main reasons we're talking about the Almond Conference first and foremost today is um, it was a virtual conference this year. You know, in this time of COVID, people are learning how to change. And I thought the Almond Board of California did such an excellent job of stepping up and taking their conference virtually. I think they did a tremendous job with the conference and uh, I wanted to be sure that uh, we spread this news and information to people and maybe if they've missed it, uh, we, could, uh, we could bring them some of the highlights from the 2020 conference. So that's number one. Number two, almonds are such an important crop to California. They uh, tend to be a little bit of a thirsty crop, but uh, we know that uh, you know 70% plus uh, of the almond growers in California are using some form of micro irrigation. So uh, people are really being conscientious about the way they grow almonds. It's an important crop to California. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, we've got Kevin Stewart who attended the entire conference and he really uh, caught a lot of great presentations and he wanted to review some of those presentations with us today as well as just to point out some of the highlights. You know, if you haven't seen Kevin before, he's a great presenter. He is a certified irrigation ag specialist recognized by the Irrigation Association. He's uh, spent a, a lifetime in agriculture. He really cares about his customers and his clients. And if you've uh, seen it, uh, Kevin, or if you've had the pleasure of interacting with him uh, about irrigation, you'll see how easy and pleasant uh, he is to uh, deal with and uh, more importantly, how good his information is. So Kevin, welcome uh, back. Uh, Happy New Year. And uh, how was the conference this year? Thank you, Richard. Happy New Year. Uh, the conference was fantastic. It uh, was uh, kind of a, a new frontier for me, uh, going uh, kind of my first real virtual conference uh, that we attended. We also had a, a booth uh, at this conference, and, and that might be a whole other story. But uh, uh, in a nutshell, it was a fantastic conference, uh, very well done. Uh, yeah, the Almond Board did a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah I, a little bit I saw that what I saw, I, I felt the same way. And uh, like I said, I was so happy they stepped up and did this. And Kevin, one thing I think, uh, and I'm interested in your opinion on this, but I think going forward, uh, even after COVID, when we're able to travel and go to conferences again, which I can't wait to do, right? I love that interaction of the, of the face to face, but uh, not everybody can always travel to these conferences. I think the way things are going, virtual conference is going to be a part of every conference, that there will be an online function of, uh, of conferences going forward. What, what do you think about that? I, I totally agree. I, uh, I, I'm anxious to get back out and interact and visit and see uh, different uh, you know, customers and friends and, 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 and people. But uh, I, I do think uh, moving forward, kind of our new normal, I think it's going to be a combination of both. And I think uh, with technology and the advent of uh, video conferencing and kind of how this is working, I, I, th I think you're gonna see a lot more uh, opportunities for maybe those that don't feel comfortable, uh, you know, visiting face-to-face -face in person uh, in a conference where they can tune in and, uh, and see it virtually. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I love the fact that you, uh, if we missed, you've got us covered today. So uh, tell us about what we missed if we missed the uh, Almond Conference. Okay. Well, you know, it was, as I mentioned, you know, it was a, a, a very good conference, very well done. Um, you know, I've been attending the Almond Conference for years and uh, this uh, you know, really the first year where, you know, I, I didn't fly to Sacramento and I kind of traded in a, an airline ticket for a, a front row seat in my office uh, over a three-day period. So I don't think anything beats in my opinion, a face-to-face -face being there in person. But uh, given the situation, I, th I think this has worked out really, really well. And yeah, you can tell that uh, the Almond Board really, uh, and they, they went through a lot of efforts to make sure that uh, you know, they had good, good quality content and, and uh, great speakers and, uh, and just you know, a good uh, display of information. Yeah, so Kevin, when somebody came to our booth, uh, were you able, you know, usually we collect uh, business cards when we're there in person. Uh, how did that work in a, in a virtual booth? 
it was interesting and, and this was this was Jane's first uh, time really doing a virtual booth and uh, uh, you know the interaction was was uh, was good you know it's 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 not face to face and so you know there's a little bit of back and forth there was a chat feature you know where you could communicate with uh, different people uh, you know we uh, as a company had uh, gone through and uh, linked up some of our videos and literature and uh, we actually did a, a survey or a questionnaire uh, just to kind of catch people's attention and, and uh, uh, raffled off a uh, a Yeti cooler uh, for those that participated, and uh, we actually just uh, in the final process of, of uh, you know getting that uh, wrapped up. But yeah, it was a good uh, it was a good trade show. Um, we're able to uh, meet new people and uh, uh, just a different way of doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, let me uh, let me kind of jump into this and. Uh, you know, with uh, with over 25 sessions in a three day period, uh, the conference was really packed with just a lot of great material uh, for those in the almond industry. And uh, if you wanted to learn something, yeah, there was definitely something there for you. Uh, I think the almond board, uh, as I mentioned, just did an outstanding job putting this uh, together. Uh, with any of these, there's there's always a chance, right? There's going to be a glitch or two. Um, but outside of, you know, in my opinion, you know, minor issues, I think, uh, I think they did a, just a fantastic job. I uh, mentioned that I, uh, you know, been attending this and, uh, you know, there were 25 plus uh, uh, topics or sessions that were, uh, you know, to, to, to pick from. I, I couldn't attend every single thing as we were kind of running our booth, uh, but I did, uh, I, you know, I, was able to maybe attend, you know, at least 10 uh, different uh, sessions, you know, some ran kind of at the same time. So you had to pick, you know, what was going to really be of most interest. Um, as far as just doing a recap or an overview, I felt like uh, maybe those that didn't make it that are tuning in and uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, I just wanted to share, uh, you know, five different uh, aspects of uh, things that I learned uh, at uh, this conference and uh, We'll kind of go through, uh, I'll provide some highlights on the state of the industry. Um, I really enjoyed optimizing uh, orchard profitability. Uh, it was interesting to learn more about new perspectives in irrigation. Uh, pollination was something I didn't really know much about. And so gaining some insight there and, uh, and just learning about uh, organic production and uh, for almonds and, and how you do it and how many how many people are uh, growing uh, almonds for uh, organic? Hey, hey, Kevin, I'm just curious, how did they get the uh, speakers? I mean, did people apply to be a presenter or, or were they all from the uh, almond board? How, how does that work? Do, do you know? Uh, it, yeah, I, 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 I don't know exactly what the criteria was, but, uh, you know, they leaned on uh, many growers uh, within the organization. Um, they, uh, UC Davis uh, was, was probably one of the main technical uh, providers where they shared a lot of their research. And uh, I think there were some you know, different associations, um, individuals uh, at the California Almond Board uh, moderated a lot of these, uh, a, a lot of these topics. And uh, so, yeah, between, and, 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 and I mean, there were some industry professionals, uh, you know, people within, uh, you know, packing facilities and, uh, different uh, organizations uh, that were able to, uh, to, to speak and uh, share their insight. Yeah, well, that's great. That's uh, a little bit of uh, academia, a little bit of uh, real world uh, in the field every day. Uh, it's a great combination. It, it, it really was, yeah. I mean, everything, nothing was really, you know, too far, you know, over my head as far as being able to understand uh, this. It was, it was uh, down to earth, uh, practical information. Um, in the state of the industry, they, you know, for 2020, and this isn't going to be a surprise to anybody, but they address, you know, some of the obstacles uh, that, uh, you know, we as uh, individuals and, and businesses uh, have uh, faced and struggled with. Uh, COVID-19 was really kind of top of mind and uh, really kind of a center of, of uh, conversation. I think a lot of people initially, they didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know uh, when, when, the state shut down, people wondered, am I going to have a job? And uh, I think uh, 
it was nice to hear some of the insight that uh, some of the growers shared in the state of the industry that uh, they're happy to say, hey, we're considered essential. Yeah, you do have a job. And uh, not only do you have a job, but we, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna take steps and make sure that we put the precautions in to make sure that you have a safe job. And so it was interesting to kind of hear uh, what uh, growers were doing to keep their employees safe, uh, to keep the economy going and uh, just in, in general, keep, uh, keep business running. So in, you know, in Jane Irrigation, I can, I can relate to, to that and, um, as far as you know, what our organization's done to, to, keep, uh, to keep moving and, and providing products and materials to our customers and keeping our employees uh, safe. And uh, you know, we've had really good leadership uh, in our organization as well. Um, another challenge is uh, the price of almonds right now has really kind of, it, it's kind of at an all time low. It's really taken a dip. And I'll show a graph uh, where we look at kind of a 10 year trend and uh, kind of what, uh, what's caused some of that. But uh, the, uh, you know, one of the main things is uh, just, uh, you know, I think it relates to the, uh, the, the tariff that's, uh, you know, been in place uh, overseas, mainly with China. There's a 55% tariff um, the almond growers have had to deal with on trying to export their their product uh, overseas uh, to China specifically, and so that's been a hard market to compete with uh, with other countries that may say Australia that, that doesn't have a tariff at all with China, and so these have been some challenges. Uh, these were kind of the, the top three that I took note of uh, as uh, uh, you know they were discussing some of the state of the industry. Looking at the highlights, um, the uh, this year, tw the 2020 crop, um, they just considered it really just almost a perfect bloom. Everything was really set in place uh, to have just an absolute wonderful bloom. Uh, there was, you know, it was dry, uh, you know, warm weather's not, not too warm. Um, and it just, it really allowed fly hours for bees, it allowed these bees to do what they do. And, uh, so it, uh, yeah, the, the, the bloom uh, was, was really, really good. There's estimates uh, that this is gonna be a 3 billion pound crop this year, which would be setting a new record uh, for that. Uh, it'd be a 17% year over year increase. So just to put it in perspective, you know, if you go back to kind of when almonds really commercially started going back in the, maybe the, the 50s, it took about 50, 55 years to get to a billion pounds. And, uh, and it only took another, uh, I think 18 years to add another 2 billion uh, pounds to that. So you can see uh, the, the progress uh, that the industry is making as far as uh, yields and production and what they're doing. Uh, but yeah, um, I think uh, there's every expectation that it's gonna be a 3 billion pound crop. Uh, something wow. the, the combination of a really good crop and the tariffs uh, is this what really uh, hurt the pricing? I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I believe so. I, I, I think that's probably a, a contributing factor is just maybe not being able to find a home for all of your product with a depressed price. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, that's played a role uh, in it. Yeah, um, I love this uh, bullet to a daily must have snack. I know that's true for me. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's interesting. All day. <laughs> I mean, I, I love almonds. Yeah, they're, they're a great snack. Um, outside of ingredient-based products where you see almonds, I mean, they're, they're found in uh, a lot of different products. I know the, the board, the associations really tried to drive home that uh, it's more than that. It, it's really an everyday healthy must-have snack and consumers have picked up on that. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, in, in the US as consumers, you're seeing uh, people eat uh, more almonds. Um, in the export market, you're seeing kind of the middle class uh, starting to consume more almonds as well. And uh, uh, India uh, right now is our largest export. And uh, I think uh, as you're seeing more and more people, um, you know, eat almonds, you know, you're going to see, uh, you know, more shipments uh, go across seas. Uh, something else that I thought was interesting was uh, the... Uh, you know, there's about, there's over a million acres of almonds. I think it's closer to, you know, 1.3, 1.4 million acres. Um, over 90% of those acres 
uh, our family farms. Uh, there's over 7,000 uh, almond farms uh, in, in California. 90% of those are family farms. So it, uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting takeaway as well. Yeah, it's really a, a cool statistic, right? This is um, what, we, what we think of a lot when we think of agriculture. Yeah. Um, so, th you know, they highlighted uh, uh, four goals. Um, you know, these are goals that they're really strategic uh, in nature that they really want to try and uh, achieve within the, the industry. Uh, water use efficiency uh, was one of them. And, you know, if you look back um, around 1982, the almond industry started looking at ways to improve irrigation practices and get away from flood irrigation and, and find alternatives to drip and micro irrigation. And uh, growers have been able to reduce the amount of water to grow almonds by 33% over that period of time. So that, I mean, that, that's quite a bit. There's been a 33% reduction as far as applying water to that crop. Uh, they don't wanna stop there. They, they feel like, you know, there's still uh, room to, to, to grow and, and save water. Uh, they have an initiative to, by the year 2025, is to save another 20% of applied water to the crop. And uh, so I think that's interesting. And I think, you know, I mean, we're in this space, uh, you know, how, how are they going to do that? What are things, um, you know, that are going to be done? And I'm sure there's cultural practices that can be put in place and maybe different varieties. I do think, you know, it's going to be incumbent on, upon us uh, in the irrigation industry to, to find ways to improve our products even more. I think the ag technology sector is going to really uh, step up and help people decide when and how much to irrigate. You know, there's probably 10%, in, in my opinion, that you could probably shave just in scheduling your irrigation uh, as far as intervals and, and the duration. So it should be interesting uh, to see how that, uh, how that plays out. Um, when you think about 10% savings and the uh, number of acres you mentioned earlier, uh, this is a potentially significant uh, uh, number. Yeah, ten you know, percent over you know, over a million acres. Yeah, um, yeah, you're, you're you're talking you know huge huge savings. Uh, air quality you know, harvest you know creates quite a bit of dust, and uh, I know that uh, you know they've got an initiative where they really want to reduce their dust by fifty percent, and so they're looking at ways to keep a, a clean orchard floor. Uh, they're looking at different harvest uh, methods and practices maybe slowing down uh, the harvester. I think there was a study that if you went from say three miles per hour down to one and a half miles per hour, you could save, uh, cut your dust right there, uh, I think by about uh, 50%. So, excuse me, I got ahead of myself here. Um, so yeah, it uh, should be pretty pretty interesting to, to kind of see what, uh, um, if, if, if you're from the valley and you're, you're driving, and um, you, you can sit, typically kind of pick out who's harvesting a, a field. I mean, you can see kind of a plume of dust, um, you know, above the, uh, above the orchard. So uh, they're definitely looking for ways to uh, create better, um, uh, reduce air pollution and just, you know, create a better environment. Uh, pest management is also a key, a, a key topic. It probably just a never ending search to find more friendlier environmentally ways uh, to uh, to control insects and pests. And so I, uh, I think we should stay tuned with that. And then, uh, you know, recycling, you know, typically it's been when they recycle kind of the, the holes on the shells. I, I think they're looking at more of a holistic approach and, and looking at, yeah, how can they recycle every, um, every part of that tree? And so there's, I know there's initiatives and studies going on uh, to look for ways where they've got zero waste and recycling. If you're after 25 years, a lot of these trees will get pulled out. And so they're looking at, at better ways to recycle those trees. I talked about the almond prices and I just kind of plotted on a graph. This is, you know, a, about a 10 year timeline and you can see um, kind of, you know, this is in uh, price per pounds. Um, you can see where it kind of peaked at $4 a pound. I think you know, you know, back in uh, you know 2014 uh, time period. If I run just kind of a uh, an example, maybe for a, a grower in Bakersfield that's yielding 
maybe 3,000 pounds per acre, um, they would really need to be at about that $2.50 to break even. So you can see we're right now we're at $1.60. So, um, you know, I think most people are looking for this to turn around and get to, to more of a break even standpoint. Now, these are average numbers and there's, you know, growers that, you know, uh, maybe yielding a lot more than 3,000 pounds per acre or, um, you know, their cost to produce is, is, is different because they're, you know, maybe not as, uh, you know, leveraged uh, as others, but on, on average, this is just, you know, kind of a good, ex a good example of kind of how, uh, how the prices look and what a break even uh, would, would be at. It's interesting because this is the, uh, this is the year that the pressure is really on when the prices are down, you have to have a good year. Right. If you don't have the good year, the year the prices are down, that's uh, that could be um, uh, you know horrific to your organization. So, uh, yeah. right, right. I mean, a good segue. It kind of leads into, you know, what's what's the key to to low prices, and um, in, in one of these sessions on optimizing orchard profitability, um, kind of the, the resounding comment was, you know, look for higher yields. And uh, that's really going to be really your best way to, to combat a low price. And uh, they went through and, and talked about different, uh, different things that you can do to optimize, um, you know, the profitability. And we'll go through and, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've bullet pointed out a few things here. Um, if you can time your harvest and get the almonds uh, off the tree um, before what they, they consider kind of a third generation navel orange worm, um, you can avoid a lot of damage to your crop. And so timing, uh, timing that harvest to tr maybe be on the early end of it uh, rather than delayed is gonna um, you know, reduce uh, this, uh, this, this pest right here, this uh, navel orange worm, um, you know, which is uh, a, a real problem for, uh, for almond growers. Um, you know, if, if you wanna reduce your fertilizer applications, I really think you should and the experience is, is, you know, test your soil, make sure that you're working with um, a trusted advisor, a, a PCA, somebody that really understands fertility. And I think a lot of people want to figure out ways where they can, you know, they can do more with less and cut uh, some of these out. You know, there might be enough nutrients in the soil where there can be small reductions, but you certainly don't want to do that without uh, kind of checking, checking things out first. Um, Sometimes a dry spring will often lead to less fungicide applications. People think, you know, it's not as, as wet out and maybe I don't need to worry about uh, applying some of these. Um, you know, that, that can be kind of a misconception. So again, you're gonna wanna make sure that, uh, you know, that you have your applications and your timings right, that you're not uh, missing out on some of these applications. Um, you know, one, uh, one panelist, you know, talked about uh, that most growers they're willing to spend money um, to help maximize their yield or their quality. And uh, you know, they, they wanna be profit maximizers, not really cost minimizers. And so if there's something that, that they can do that's gonna add more uh, to um, you know, their quality or yield per acre, I think most growers are probably looking for that. Um, you know, one individual said that early in his career, he was consulting with uh, an almond grower looking for ways to save money and the grower said, listen, I'm, I'm paying you to help me make money, not save money. Show me things, you know, give me tools that will help me be more profitable, uh, make more money. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and then rather than trim costs, I think it's better. And I've kind of led to some of this. If you look for improved efficiencies, you know, if you have a drip system, maybe take the time to, to see how efficient that is, do a, a DU distribution and uniformity analysis and see see where that's at. Um, I, I've done some of these over the years and I mean there's you know a lot of orchards that are probably lower than where they should be. Maybe in the you know the, the 70s, uh, high 70s, low 80s, you can easily um, with the right tools move these up to 90 plus uh, percent. So which would be you know a huge efficiency uh, boost. Check your sprayers, your nozzles, make sure that uh, everything uh, is uh, operating properly. Um, you don't want to make sure that you've got strong beehives and we'll kind of talk about that in the pollination. And then uh, weed control is also uh, something that you want to make sure that uh, 
to uh, uh, you know spend the time to, to control that. Uh, it was mentioned, you know, don't skip on irrigation. Don't try and cut your water back by by too much. Uh, I think one study showed that by trying to cut back by 10 inches of water, you know, they lost about 800 pounds per acre uh, in their their yield, their crop. So um, that was an isolated um, study, but I mean, it's still, you know, I thought it was worth uh, sharing and noting that uh, maybe it's okay to, to to try and find small ways to save, but if you do anything drastic, you're probably going to pay for that. Uh, in your crop, in your yield. If uh, Richard, I don't know if you've ever been uh, up and down the valley in kind of that uh, February uh, time frame, say anywhere from you know north of Sacramento down to Bakersfield. But uh, it, it, if you haven't, uh, uh, you're really you're missing out on a spectacular site um, for about two to three weeks. Uh, the almond crop goes into bloom. So you've got one, one, you know, 1.4 million acres of almonds uh, in that period that uh, just completely go into bloom. So I, I, have, you, have you been through the valley in kind of that period to where you've, you've seen that? Yeah, definitely. I've seen that, Kevin. And the other thing I've seen is uh, your photos that you take that are in the Jane photo gallery of this uh, that are uh, as good and sometimes better than the actual bloom itself. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just spectacular. And I, I really appreciate the photos that are there too. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. I took this photo uh, a few years back. Um, it was right during the, the World Ag Expo. And uh, I just, you know, <laughs> the, the, the bloom is spectacular. And uh, it's a pretty sight, but it, 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 it's, it's so much more than that as well. Um, I just, I wanted to show an illustration of kind of the migration of honeybees uh, as hives are moved from uh, various locations. And you can kind of see the route uh, that a lot of these uh, go on and the, you know, the different stops and different, different crops that uh, they pollinate. Huh. You can see that uh, almonds, uh, you know, you got 1.4 million acres uh, of, of a crop that really needs to be pollinated. I think it's probably the largest uh, crop uh, that needs uh, pollination. So I mentioned that, uh, you know, 2020, fantastic bloom, just all the conditions were um, kind of lined up uh, to get a lot of bee fly hours, which is, you know, what they need to pollinate the crop. Um, you know, the bloom period is really what determines how many nuts per tree are going to be on there. Um, most almond varieties require uh, pollination, which is really the transfer of pollen from one tree to another, and the, the bee is what does that. Uh, most uh, almond uh, orchards uh, have uh, two hives uh, per acre. So um, you've got about 40,000 bees running around uh, transferring pollen from, you know, you, you generally have more than one variety uh, in, uh, in an almond field. And so they're kind of, you know, moving that, that pollen around and the nectar as well. And really kind of fertilizing each one of those flowers or pollinating it. Um, you know, for a, for a crop. So as the almond trees blossom, uh, honeybees forage uh, the orchard for pollen and, and also for nectar, and they pollinate the, uh, the almond flowers. Um, this is generally done in a pretty short period of time. Um, you know, there's, there's things, and I know the, the almond board uh, has quite a few articles and uh, training seminars on uh, you know, you, you want to keep these honeybees safe. You don't want to, you don't want to damage the bees. And, and really, you know, chemicals really shouldn't be applied really at all uh, during the bloom. And uh, if you do need to make a, uh, an application, it, it's generally a, a fungicide application for like a, a bloom spray. Um, they recommend that you, that you do this kind of late in the afternoon when the bees are, are resting or dormant or at night, you know, when they're really hardly active at all. Um, I know that, uh, you know, there's different uh, surfactants and adjuvants uh, that have been shown to be harmful for bees. Um, so, I mean, there, there's things that, that really need to be considered. Uh, I know a, a cover crop, a pollinator cover crop, really helps hives, uh, helps them, uh, gives them a little bit more of a di diverse uh, nutrition. And uh, I, I realize this is a webinar, you can't, uh, 
um, you know, click on this link, but this, this link right here, if you wanted to, if you're listening in, if you want to, you know, go to that link, uh, these are the best management practices um, for honeybees and for pollination and kind of the, you know, things to do and things not to do. So just a, a real insight of information. Yeah, so Kevin, um, I know people are moving hives around California at different times of the year. And I was thinking about your pollinator map earlier. Are people moving bees around the country too? Um, I, I believe so, yeah. I mean, they're, they're moving hives around and, and, and I'm not an expert on this, Richard, but I, I believe that, uh, yeah, you, you're moving these, these, these hives with bees and you know, each colony has a queen and you're moving these around the country and, and uh, this is kind of that migration map. Um, it's an amazing the amount of bees it takes. I mean, I, looking at that 40,000 number, I was like, wow. Yeah, and I mean, I mean and that's just, uh, you know, for, for one acre. So it, it's, a, it's, it's a, a pretty interesting uh, concept. Um, every, if you think about every almond that you eat, you know, there's been a bee to pollinate, uh, you know, that, that flower. Every oh. one of the flowers will produce an almond. So, yeah. You know, if, uh, if it doesn't get uh, pollinated, it's not going to produce. Um, there was a session on uh, new perspectives in irrigation. And, uh, you know, one of the key takeaways I, I kind of, I mean, there, there were a few on, on this slide right here. Um, probably the, the main thing I thought was of real interest is I think sometimes people forget that uh, a newly established uh, almond planting or orchard uh, isn't going to have the same water requirement as something uh, that's more mature. And I know that these are kind of small and maybe hard to see, but this is a, this is a two leaf onion crop right here. And these are irrigation events. And uh, it's a little hard to see, but it, I think it peaks out at about 25 uh, uh, inches here. You can see um, this is a third leaf uh, almond crop and you can see it's closer to, you know, about that 40 inches. So you, you you just see the big difference between a two leaf and a three leaf uh, almond crop and the water requirement and uh, you know what what that's going to need and so i think it's uh, i think it's important i mean there's about a 40 percent difference uh, in water requirement between these these two right here um on this graph you've got a, a two three and a four leaf and so you can see that the three and the four are much more uh, consistent than the two and uh, here I think you've got a three, four, and a five. Um, so you can see kind of how this uh, how this looks. Again, the main takeaway uh, on this is don't over irrigate younger trees. Just because you have in your your head that you need to apply forty inches of water uh, probably uh, doesn't uh, apply to something that's just starting out. Um, they also talked about when to start an irrigation. You know, if uh, kind of the Goldilocks approach, you know, if you, you, know, you want to do it just right, but if you happen to start too early, what are the consequences? If you happen to start too late, what happens? Uh, in walnuts, I, I know it's a real concern uh, if you start too early. It, 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 I think almonds are a little bit more forgiving uh, and uh, it's not as much of a concern. They don't really see really any detrimental effects if irrigation is slightly delayed. Uh, if, if you really start too late um, and wait too long, the trees are really going to use up that deep soil moisture and you're going to run out of water when it's time to harvest when you can't put water uh, on. You can't run your sprinkler or your drip because you're right in the middle of the harvest. Um, you're going to run into problems. You're probably going to see some deformed fruit and it's probably going to cause problems for your, your, your crop um, you know, for the coming year. So. And they kind of went into detail uh, on that. It's a little, you know, didn't really have the time to, to kind of go through. But if, you, if you're really interested in kind of, you know, what that does to the to the bloom for the, the subsequent 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 year, um, you can uh, you can check that out. I think the ultimate goal in almonds is really try to, to balance the water budget in an orchard. It's, it's important to understand uh, inputs and outputs of a system. Um, you know, the inputs are the irrigation and, and the, the drainage and the runoff. The output is really the uh, evaporation, the transpiration, uh, the ET. So I think the goal is to kind of match this up. 
um, you know, match the, the water need uh, to the losses through, uh, through the ET. And uh, I, I felt like uh, I, I wanted to take a minute and, and just, you know, talk about, you know, we're talking about new perspectives in irrigation. I, I wanted just to mention a little bit about Jane Logic, uh, which is a, a technology company of Jane Irrigation. Uh, that focuses on helping growers really optimize uh, their irrigation planning. And, um, you know, we use satellite imagery. Uh, we use weather forecasts. Uh, we use soil information to, to make decisions on this. Uh, with over tw 25,000 customers um, and over 26 million daily readings, we've gained a lot of insight. We've got a lot of expertise and a lot of know-how on how to uh, predict how and when uh, you should irrigate. Um, we have moisture maps uh, that have exception-based reporting tools uh, that help growers make decisions on when to irrigate. Um, and you know, if there's a problem area, um, you know, we identify that. And so if, you know, if you're growing you know, a, a thousand acres and you've got these, uh, you, you know, you're utilizing this technology, you know, we're able to tell you areas that are that are perfectly fine and maybe something that might be too dry and you immediately need to go look at. Um, we also have bigger uh, maps that really show kind of the satellite image of the uh, of the, the crop water use and kind of the trends and what that looks like and you can kind of you know compare uh, compare that information. Uh, we provide these uh, uh, on a daily and weekly uh, weekly basis. Something I thought was really cool is that we have a soil moisture content chart that uh, kind of shows, um, if you can see this, this is really the root zone uh, for a, a crop. And so you know that this is really where you wanna target your irrigations to be. Uh, you can see that uh, this light blue, these are irrigation events, and the dark blue is where the water actually ends up. And so uh, again, in a perfect world, you really kind of wanna be, you know, in that root zone. You know, if you're, if you're not enough, you're probably stressing the crop. If you're too far, you're probably, you know, leaching, um, uh, deep percolating, um, you know, water and, and nutrients through the soil profile. So if, uh, if, if, if that's of interest to you, um, you know, I'll have my contact information uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. But uh, um, we've got a, a great team that works with this stuff day in and day out uh, to make sure that uh, we're partnering with uh, different growers and organizations uh, to help them make the, the best uh, decisions, uh, you know, given the information that we have available. Yeah, what a, what a valuable tool, Kevin, and an ability to see what water is doing below the soil line. All right, I think about that in my truck. Uh, if I didn't have a gas gauge and I could see how much gas I had, I'd always be topping it off. I'd be driving a little bit and filling up because I wouldn't want to run out and probably overusing and, um, and, and not <clears throat> Not doing myself uh, very, very much help. And this really gives you that ability to see what's actually happening under the soil. I, I can't imagine operating without this. Yeah, well, and I mean, and you know, I, I mean, there's, there's countless growers that, that bank on this information and probably wouldn't, uh, you know, wouldn't want to turn on an irrigation system unless they knew exactly, you know, what things look like. And so this, this really is a roadmap to help uh, growers make good decisions and uh, hope you know, help them maximize, you know, water. I mean, it's, it's limited. It's, uh, it's can be short in supply in certain areas. And, you know, we need to, uh, you know, uh, make the best use of it. And uh, you're investing, you know, millions of dollars into, uh, into a field or a crop. You want to make sure you're not shortchanging it, but you don't want to uh, um, waste water as well. So yeah, these tools really help keep people really on the road, you know, the center of the road, and um, really keep them, uh, you know, irrigation, ir irrigating as, as efficiently as possible. Yeah, I think you make a really good point there too. Uh, when you think of about the value of the crop in the field compared to the initial investment of a few thousand dollars of technology, um, <clears throat> you know, it's such a small percentage to really uh, maximize those yields and, and reduce the labor. I, uh, I feel like it's a must have. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Um, it, the, the, the final session that I'll, I'll share here was on organic almonds. I was kind of curious, and I'd kind of had some questions going into it, 
and uh, I, you know, most of these questions weren't answered. I thought maybe I'd just kind of go through. I was curious how many almond acres you know there are uh, in the state of California, and it's about one percent of the acres huh. is, is what is in uh, organic right now. Um, I was curious when you start uh, an almond orchard, do you start it out organically or is it a conversion? At what point can you, you know, take a conventional uh, crop and, and make it organic? And that's typically what, uh, what they do. Um, the, the growers that I listen to, um, you know, they, they would take a, a conventional crop and, and, and switch it to organic. Younger trees really need really good weed control and fumigation in the soil in the beginning. And uh, so I think um, the thought is, is let's you know, get these trees established. Let's get this crop established. Uh, it takes about three years to make the uh, conversion from conventional uh, to organic. By the time that the, uh, you know, the crop starts bearing or producing uh, nuts is uh, by the kind of the time that uh, you, know, you want to switch that um, to where you know, it's an organic crop. Um, you know, why would somebody want to grow organic almonds? Uh, in, in general, um, I think for most, it's probably a business decision, a way to, to differentiate uh, themselves from uh, the rest of the group and, and find a way to get a premium for your crop. Um, I think, you know, for others, it's kind of taking this sustainable, holistic approach and uh, trying to use the least amount of synthetic um, products and fertilizers as possible. Um, do organic almonds yield less? Um, they, they do. Um, you know, that's mainly because of disease and insects. You just, you don't have maybe as good of tools uh, to control some of these things. Um, I showed just a, a, an example here of a, a six year crop. Uh, organic would be producing 1800 pounds uh, per acre versus 2200 pounds per acre. So, I mean, you can see the difference there. Um, you know, you've got 400 pounds per acre. Uh, that you're giving up. Uh, the, the goal and the hope is that you're getting a very good premium for your crop. Um, in some cases, you know, I think, you know, I mean, I, I know that they've seen a, a double in price over what a conventional almond would sell for. Uh, and there's probably instances where it's a lot more than that as well. So getting started, you know, what do you, what do you do? Um, most everyone says, hey, start small. You know, you don't want to jump into this, you know, too big, kind of bet the entire farm on it. So, um, you know, take a small percent of your acres that are existing or new, newly planted and figure out what you want to do with that. But most people, you know, are taking a small percent, converting it to, uh, to organic. Uh, a lot would say start conventional, you know, good to get that almond crop going for a couple of years and then transition it, you know, from a conventional uh, to uh, an organic crop. Uh, eliminate weed seed uh, before planting. Uh, this can be done uh, with fumigation, uh, with uh, deep cultivation, and also with uh, solarization. Uh, these are all good options uh, to try and completely eliminate uh, some of this weed seed before you plant. Um, you know, I think variety selection is important as well. And uh, I, I know that three um, you know, popular varieties in California that, that do well for, for both conventional and organic or non parallel California in uh, emission. So make sure that you're considering a good variety um, you know, that might be you know, more tolerant uh, to some of the you know, weeds and insects and pests. Uh, those are things that need to be considered. Um, considering a different tree and row spacing you want to be able to make it easier to do cross row and in, in between row cultivations so that uh, that's going to be important. You may um, not be able to plant as dense as you would with a conventional planting. Um, I, I know that uh, as far as weed control, most growers, I don't think they love using this, but I, I think, uh, you know, propane burners really seem to be a, a good way to keep those strips uh, clean. And I think they, they do that about every 10 to 14 days. Um, I think you need to be prepared, you know, for increased labor, you know, having more people available and, and, and uh, you're going to have uh, probably a higher bill uh, when it comes to, to labor and uh, be prepared for lower yields as well. But uh, I think the payoff is that premium 
you know, being able to, to have something that, you know, most don't and, uh, you know, find, uh, find that niche, uh, find that premium uh, to sell your crop. Uh, I'll quickly kind of go through uh, some of these as I'm kind of getting uh, long on time here, but, uh, you know, pest management, um, you know, there, you can see on the slide, there's different, uh, different uh, avenues to, to go as far as um, trying to you know, reduce your pest um, through different cultural practices to uh, uh, cinnamon essential oil. I, I'd never heard of that, but it, it apparently seems to work pretty well for dust control for mites. And uh, I talked about the varieties. Uh, weed management, I, I would say uh, in hearing growers, this is probably the number one challenge uh, to overcome. And so uh, propane burners seem to do a pretty good job, um, you know, being able to, to, to clean up the middles and uh, with a mower, um, if you've got, uh, you know, weeds that are coming up, uh, maybe have some kind of a netting underneath the, the, the tree row um, that will uh, kind of a, a weed mat or a netting uh, that'll help reduce weeds. And, uh, you know, a cover crop can help with weed suppression as well. Um, it, it does bring up uh, a host of issues um, as far as attracting uh, rodents and gophers and, and different things. And fertilizer applications, I, I, I would say, you know, if you're looking at this, you make sure that you align yourself with somebody that really understands uh, fertilizers, especially for organic, you know, what's gonna be the best options. Um, I know that nitrogen-based products, you're gonna spend a, a lot of money um, probably four times what you would traditionally uh, spend on that is what I've seen. Um, I know that zinc and boron are important micronutrients. Um, you know, you're definitely going to want to get a, a tissue analysis or understand, you know, what those needs are before uh, you just make a, a decision on how much to apply. And uh, I think, uh, you know, there were some growers that use different composting and different manures. Um, it seemed like they were trying to get away from that a little bit and, uh, you know, find something um, you know, that is uh, OMRI, uh, you know, certified uh, that might be, uh, do a little bit better job. So I, I, I appreciate it, Richard, for letting me take uh, about 45 minutes. Uh, I applaud the Almond Board for setting up what I would consider just a top-notch conference. Uh, I think they set a very, very high bar for other uh, organizations to follow. And, uh, you know, Jane, we're heavily invested in the almond industry uh, with our drip uh, products, our micro irrigation products. Um, you know, this is a, a, a market that we uh, are involved in and, and do a lot of business in. And so if, uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to work with somebody at Jane, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, I would be happy to answer any questions or point you in the right direction when it comes to getting in touch with somebody, you know, with ag technology to help uh, you know, maybe manage your water, um, or if you're looking for, uh, you know, great quality products um, to help irrigate, um, you know, we have both. So thanks again, Richard. Hey, Kevin, thank you so much. Uh, one thing I really appreciate about your presentations is they're uh, really comprehensive and thorough. Uh, I always feel at the end that I could almost, and I know almost, uh, walk out the door and uh, farm almonds now. Um, I, I think you do a really good job of that, and I really appreciate you coming on and, and helping all our viewers. Uh, I also know uh, that the, uh, the Almond Board is going to be appreciative of this. Um, you really did capture uh, some great presentation, some great material, put it in a form that a lot of people can uh, understand and use. So thank you for that. And uh, to our viewers today, I want to say thank you. Uh, really appreciate you taking your time uh, during you know, what is your lunch hour for many of you. Uh, to spend time with us. Uh, I hope that our content is hitting uh, what you want to see. Uh, and please remember that we've got over 70 uh, episodes of the Jane Irrigation Training Series uh, on the Jane website now. And you can view all those for free at uh, janesusa.com and just search for the trainings and you'll, you'll see them all there. Uh, we're also on Google, uh, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts if you want to play those while you're uh, driving around. You know, sometimes it's easier to listen that way. So anyway, Kevin, again, thank you so much. Really appreciate uh, you and your time. And uh, thank you to all our viewers. And I um, uh, hope everybody has a nice weekend and we'll catch up with you next week. Thanks thank again, you. Kevin.